All right, well, welcome back, and I hope everybody can hear me now because we are facing some technical issues, and I hope that is solved now. We're going to see what happens. Um, we're coming live to you from BMI headquarters. Mm -hmm. Nice to mm -hmm. your host. This is another session of BMI Inspired. So in today's topic, the Dozy line comes around the importance of circular business models. We have a lot to discuss in today because what actually is the circular business model? Um, what can we learn from other companies who have already been in the front line of the ship? And what does it take for you to become a 100% circular? Uh, we will think and to find out during the next 15 to 60 minutes. Um, and actually, we all know, we've seen the prices in the report. Um, we have to take care of this planet. Uh, and we've seen that one is already changing. So, um, I just thought we'd like to get this party started. Um, joining us today are Case Arts, the co founder of Profit. Case, you're welcome. We got stuck in traffic, but fortunately, we just made it in time. Uh, and Ola Bynum is also joining us in business design of work at BMI. Um, if you have any questions for these two gentlemen uh, about today's topic, please don't hesitate and put them in the chat and we'll get back to that as soon as possible. So, Lola, uh, first of all, I think we have to get the definition straight. What actually is circular business model? Yeah, so uh, that's quite an important uh, question. Um, how do we define it? Mm -hmm. So let's first look at how businesses were developed and, and actually how our economy was developed. Um, when we um, actually developed businesses, we also accepted that uh, when you produce something, that uh, you also pollute and that you uh, deplete resources and all those uh, things. And um, so any business that is in business uh, has actually a negative effect on. Um, Um, and when you when you're inspired or when you want to learn from nature, I think circularity is a natural consequence of that because you quickly find out that everything is part of a circle of life. Yeah. And I think that uh, the downside uh, of that is that uh, soon after you conclude that we as humans are not really part of that anymore. Uh, we subject everything to our liking. Um, and in order to restore that, I think circularity is, is, is one of the only ways uh, to go. Yeah, your company is yes. about insects. Uh, yep. You're going to tell us a bit more about that just yep. uh, in a couple of minutes. But I've heard that the inspiration for Protex uh, was during one of your scuba diving trips. Yeah, so and, and that, that was, of course, a build up. But yeah. uh, 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 diving, um, when, you, when you're diving, you basically you're in outer space, right? Yeah. You're not, you're not truly I've, I've been there. It's yeah, great. Exactly. It's great. And um, uh, I'm an aerospace engineer and like diving is as close as you, as, as you yeah. can get. Well, not anymore, by the way, but um, uh, uh, while diving, you notice that you're not really part of it, but you see the beauty and then you see the damage. Yeah. And one of the key damages that we uh, inflict on the ocean is overfishing, um, uh, partly for foods, which will never change because we live close to sea, so consuming parts of the, the marine ingredients uh, is part of our diet. But I think uh, to catch it, to grind it in a protein meal and then to feed that protein meal to a lot of other animals um, kind of was a, a, an idea that started uh, living uh, yeah. uh, in the brain uh, during uh, some beers on the beach afterwards. Um, and I connected it with uh, a bit of knowledge about insects. And that was already 11 years ago. So. Yeah. There was nothing really out there back then. No. Um, and nowadays you're still pioneering, of course. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's pioneering with a, a large scale industrial facility. So uh, I think we're a little bit beyond the the, the pilot scale up where we're now basically already uh, selling in over 18 countries, insect based proteins and oils and ingredients feeds and foods. Yeah, uh, and, and as I mentioned, you're going to tell us more about that. Yeah. But Roland, um, a lot of companies try to be a bit more sustainable. You know, yes. they take solar panels, yeah. they separate their waste, but that actually is not enough to say that you're circular. 
No, that's right. Um, and and if you look at the, at, at the slides, if you have a, a linear business model, you, you can do all these uh, things, right? Yeah. You can take solar panels, it reduces your energy bill, uh, but, but that's more like an activity that you do maybe as a project or a program or somebody says, well, we should also have uh, solar panels, but yeah. it doesn't change anything in, your, in, in, in the core of your business. No. And um, a circular business model, and that, that's what you actually uh, see on the second slide and, and the, the overall pattern of a circular model, it makes sure that everything that you do, it doesn't go out of your business model and ends up anywhere in, in, in an incinerator or on, on, uh, as waste, but you actually make sure that everything you do, whether it's the materials that you use to produce your products, uh, that you use those in, in a really clever way and that, that they stay in the loop, or if you send them out to customers, that those products in the end return to you yeah. uh, again. And, and that's what a circular business model is all about, making sure that the value that is in the things that you sell actually comes back to you and is, uh, is used again. Yeah. Uh, and in the end, we have to get rid of the, the take, make, waste process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's actually what, what, what is causing the damage that Case talked about that you see in the ocean, but that you see everywhere if you, uh, if you open your eyes. Yeah. Uh, and I have the feeling that circularity is something which uh, is more alive among startups and, and big enterprises. And maybe small and medium businesses are less interested in the topic nowadays. Is, is this also something that you see or? Yeah, I, I thought about this. I thought it was an interesting question. So I, I, I don't have the numbers, but uh, when I look around, and uh, um, for instance, I was bringing, um, I had some waste from the garden and from working at, at my house, and I brought it to a, um, a, a waste processor nearby. And then actually, I'm always interested, okay, how does this business then work? It works because I also knew that they were actually selling materials. Yeah. So then I looked at their website and they're called uh, Baatse in, in, the, in the southern part of the Netherlands, in, in Veldhoven. And they actually said, well, if you're actually a small or medium, they're a medium sized business. Yeah. And then you're, if, if you're in this waste business, then you actually see all this waste going to waste, can we do something else? So they already in the, I think in the 70s or the 80s, they already thought about how can we actually use all the wood and the bricks and all that stuff that is coming from demolition of houses, how can, yeah. can we use that again? So I think you have to be on, on top of these things also as a medium company, you have to first see it to actually start acting on it in your business. So if you're a waste processor, you then think, okay, what can we do with this, with this waste? Can we reuse it again? And that's sometimes maybe not so obvious for yeah. smaller um, enterprise. Although I see in many restaurants, uh, they, for, for instance, they also do all kinds of things to say, well, we are very uh, keen on making sure that we uh, don't produce as much waste or the waste that we produce that, that it goes somewhere else, maybe to yeah. the food bank or whatever. So you see it more and more and also the smaller companies doing it. Yeah. And you're going to tell us a bit more about how to make the shift as a company. Yep. And you have also some good examples, of course. But first of all, Case, um, we want to know a bit more about Protix, of course, because some people already know the brand. Some others think we know insects. What actually are you doing? I will say the camera is over there. Please tell us in about like five to seven minutes uh, what your journey has been over the last 11 years. Uh, okay, so, so the principle of Protex is, is to harness uh, the power of insects and insects in nature grow on basically all that's left from other systems like leaves and, and fruits and berries and, and decaying material. And insects themselves are a vital source of nutrition for everything that lives, basically. So when it's, especially when it's young, has to grow fast or and has to build an immune system, they eat insects. Now that principle of growing fast on low grade decaying material and converting that into high quality nutrition, that is something we um, basically built on uh, because there's a lot of food waste in the world, a lot, uh, almost a billion tons plus. <laughs> and we take all of that, not yet, but we can take all of that in the, uh, and, and instead of going to landfill or incineration for energy, we can convert that back into proteins, lipids and other ingredients that can be used for feeding your pets or feeding chickens and fish for sustainable meat and fish. Um, or in the next step, and we are already prepared for that, direct as a meat replacement. So insect based proteins and lipids, they're not only very healthy, but they're also already the lowest footprint protein source. They're from a full circular source because we grow them on food waste and byproducts. Yeah. 
and they can be fed directly back into four parts of our global food system. So we're like literally connecting um, nutrition everywhere in the world. And we make basically our food system less dependent on proteins to catch from the sea or proteins to produce by land and deforestation. Yeah. So that wicked dilemma that we as humans have, like where does our food come from? Mm. How is it made and is it actually healthy? That is partly solved if you can come up with renewable circular nutrition and that is uh, insects. Yeah. And we're the part on the journey. Well, we're, uh, I think we're still at, uh, at the beginning, uh, but the first five years, it was all about understanding the biology, uh, developing the first roboticized technology systems. Um, but now we're, we're globally the, the market leader by over 80%. Wow. Um, we're who are your customers? Sorry? Your customers. Who are we, uh, we have uh, hundreds of customers in, in uh, sustainable pet foods. Yeah. So you have to imagine, I mean, proteins are used everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Um, and if you want to extend your family with a social companion called a dog, I mean, you're vastly imp- increasing your footprint. Now, mm. why do you have to feel guilty about that? And that is because climate change is upon us. And so your social desire is being challenged by an externality. Now, we help to solve that by producing f- uh, sustainable pet food with a low footprint. Same as with, with meat and fish. Uh, the future of our food is about all kinds of new tastes. Um, but with our ingredients, and these are uh, agriculture and, and, and uh, poultry companies, but with our ingredients, we can even produce um, uh, chicken and fish meat lower footprint than mm. plant-based protein. Mm. So, um, and then of course, is going to be your choice. Do you want to consume something where you know that it has a bigger footprint or do you want to consume something that just is different than anything else? So yeah. we enable a transition towards sustainable meat, fish and foods. Yeah. And what about the costs of the products? Can you already compete with the well, the regular products who are available? And, well, there are, of course, it's it's like with all innovation, uh, you have to pay for the innovation curve. Yeah. Um, it's like wind and uh, solar 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're accelerating really fast on our uh, innovation curve. So on, on some markets, we're already competing. Yeah. Um, and other volume markets, we will compete in the next couple of years. Yeah. So, uh, well, thank you uh, for having a bit more to understand about the company. Um, Roland, um, at the beginning, you were explaining more about uh, sustainable uh, and um, circular business models. Um, I've been told that the sound wasn't quite as good. So I'm going to ask you the question again, because I think it's really important for people to understand that yeah. the issues of a circular business model. What actually are we talking about? Yeah, so um, yeah, a circular business model and, 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 and case, uh, the, the, the product story is, is a nice example. It really looks for these, um, um, the, the, making sure that you reduce negative effects of your business uh, and bring that to zero and actually uh, uh, make sure that your business generates uh, positive effects. Um, and and that, that's totally different than from a traditional business, like we said in the beginning, which actually um, um, always produces a negative effect, uh, pollution, um, uh, it, it, it degrades uh, resources and, and all of these things, uh, which we try to solve by regulation. But actually, we should be solving this problem through innovation. And, yeah. and I think the example of case is great. Uh, also, the fact that you can actually find this innovation in nature, yeah. uh, if you look for it. Yeah, and if we see, and at one hand we see the uh, um, the circular business model, and we have the linear business model. Yeah. What actually are the? If you look at those two, can you mention some of the most important differences? Yes. So um, the, the the linear business model it, it doesn't care so much about what happens with the product after you have actually sold it to customers. So um, uh, the, the company, well, now now this is changing, of course, because of regulation. But um, typically, a company wouldn't care what what happens with uh, with that product. Uh, it could be sold um, uh, again by those people, and then then we call it second hand. But they could also throw it away, and and you have no control, of course, yeah. if you're in a linear model. So uh, and, and that is a big problem because. In the end, if you think about this linear model, you're using up all those resource, resources and what will you do if, if nothing is left anymore? Then you can cannot make these products anymore. But 
um, you, you actually should bring them back. Yeah. And that's what a circular business model does. It actually makes sure that you bring those products uh, back. So Nike is doing this with, with their shoes. You can yep. actually bring them back in a, in a bin in, in at least 30% of their stores. You can bring that shoe back and they actually use it again. So they take out the materials again and they use it to, to actually, they grind it and they use it to make a, a running surfaces uh, on athletic tracks. Yeah. Uh, so that is where you still use the value. There's so much value in those products and in those materials. You have to make sure that you keep using it again. Yeah, but if you look at a linear business model, it's about selling more and more. Yeah. And some people are wondering if I if I make the the if I swap to like like circular, um, how do I make a profit? Because it's not about selling as much products as you would obviously like it. Yeah, you 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 want you wanted to. Yeah, and I think uh, a, a nice example is maybe also a circular business model also accepts that there is a certain level uh, or, or or growth that you can actually achieve with your yeah. business. And if you look, for example, at Patagonia. They actually tell their customers. Even they, 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 they bought the the MBA commercial, right, right, to do a broadcast a yeah. commercial. Don't buy this jacket. Yeah. So they're actually telling people to not buy their stuff, but they're also telling that their jackets are so good that you can use them for 40 years. And then you say, well, but then you don't have that revenue, but you do have a lot of loyal customers, and those customers might be telling to others, well, you should actually buy a jacket from. Patagonia, because then you can use it for so long, and they still yeah. have a very profitable business. Okay. And, and the funny thing is that they say, we're not in the business of selling jackets. We're in the business to save the home planet. We mo want to make sure that everybody can enjoy the outdoor, of course, with the right outdoor clothing, Yeah. but we also make sure that you can uh, really uh, use it very long um, yeah. without harming the environment. So Nike and Patagonia, very, yeah. two very yeah. good examples. Yeah. So Case, um, if you look at the business model of Protex, what part of that business model is most challenging for you? Uh, for our case, in our case, it's not, there is no challenge because we're kind of like the enabler for a circular business model for our customers. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. in our case, we, we, we're a little bit lucky on this side. Um, um, and I think the difference between linear to circular is that the, the capitalist-based uh, uh, economy um, is actually not scalable. So um, a lot of companies try to scale. Yeah. But the system wherein you scale, which is good for valuations or good for uh, individual wealth accumulation, um, the system at large is not able to scale, right? So the same outputs that we have in the West, for instance, will not be uh, transferable at the same amounts and scale to everyone everywhere in the world. No. So actually, the, we're all aiming from a startup to scale up. We're all aiming to scale our business. But we know that the system wherein we do it is actually not scalable. So left or right, there will be a limit. Um, now that limit is imposed also upon us through climate change. Yeah. So the, the, the transition from linear to, to circular is actually from output to outcome. And I think that's one of the, the key uh, uh, enablers to think about. So when we the outcome of uh, everybody should enjoy hiking, we just happen to sell you some clothing that reduces the, the pressure on natural, natural systems. We do the same thing. Um, you want to enjoy pet food, fish, meat, and other uh, and alternative proteins. They have to come from somewhere. Yeah. We enable that uh, to become balanced with nature. So it's an outcome. Yeah, but at the other end, you need customers who have already made that shift. You know, because they have to change their mindset as well. How do you cope with that? Um, so in a transition, it's always uh, hard to d define that uh, because it's moving. Yeah. But I think the key is that um, if so, if you if you consider sustainability as an outcome, or uh, um, then you're actually looking at it wrongly. So sustainability is a means to get to something else. So the the the, the project sustainability. Uh, uh, demands a transition, and the outcome of that is a, a new economic environment and a new society that is no longer limited. So the economy beyond sustainability is again uh, inspirational, motivational, long-term, all those benefits that actually don't harm us physically and psychologically. So in order to get that, we need to execute the project sustainability. That includes 
a transfer to renewable energy that includes a transfer to sustainable uh, produced foods and um, and products that includes circular materials so all of these things are necessary to get there then and then in these two worlds you still have consumers i mean if you're if you consider yourself a minimalist yoga consumer in bali you're still a consumer yeah <laughs> right so you're still a consumer but um, the tr during that transition, we simply need to move from A to B. Yeah. And that is from output to outcome. Yeah, and, and well, we know we have to, but at the other end, Roland, a lot of companies uh, found it very difficult to make that shift from linear to circular. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, um, I mean, uh, somebody needs to uh, actually trigger you to, to do this. So an example is this interface. It's a well-known, uh, or, or it, 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 it's famous for actually um, uh, already in, in the 80s saying, we, we are going to execute on mission zero. Yeah. So within 20 years from now, we actually want to make sure that we don't have these negative effects uh, anymore uh, and that, that, it, that it goes to zero. And um, um, Ray Anderson, the, the founder of that company, he was just an industrialist. He, 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 he had a very good business producing uh, carpets. Yeah. But uh, also one of his customers pointed out, well, but what are you doing to actually make your production more sustainable? And he thought, well, I'm indeed an engineer. And actually the way we produce these carpets with all these toxic uh, glues and stuff in it, uh, that's not a good way to actually... No sustain this business in the long term because uh, in the end we won't exist anymore if we keep on doing uh, this uh, so he that that was for his the trigger and and then he came up with a vision and he also had to convince because in the in the beginning also in his own company and he was even the founder people weren't convinced and said well we cannot do this but in the end they they pulled it off because they also started to to think completely differently about uh, uh, where you actually um, uh, get the stuff you need to actually produce those carpets. And now they even clean up the beaches with the plastic in yeah. the Philippines. And as a brand, produce, they're very successful. Yeah, to produce those carpets. And that's actually carbon positive instead yeah. of even carbon neutral. So they went actually again to the next level. Yeah, great, uh, great story. Uh, we have a question of one of our viewers. His name is Jelle. Uh, and Jelle uh, says, often we talk about circular business models with physical goods. How can a circular business model apply on more service providing businesses like banks, insurers, accountancy firms, strategy and advisement? I think that's a question for you, uh, Roland. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Uh, I, I think, well, for, for these really the, the, the service providers that, that provide these maybe intangible services, um, I, I think maybe there you should look more into, okay, what can we also do to reduce footprint and then it might be energy use of those uh, businesses but i think also then maybe if you're in the what we would like to what, what, would it, what we like to do as bmi we're also such a consultancy company um, we also want to we also actually use the knowledge that we have in actually to to inspire others to to go circular and to, to move into another direction so yeah. it might also be for those companies more facilitating the shift of other companies and and i know the banks like bmp and, and ing we've worked with them they also see that the world is moving into this direction and that actually the long-term investors want to invest in those kind of companies and yeah. they want to bank with those kind of companies so for them there's maybe more a facilitating role yeah um, and of course, next to that, making sure that they do everything to reduce their their footprint. Uh, yeah, um, I think it's more heavy. I mean, if, if you're if you're in banks or consultancies or many other service providers, you often are an enabler for a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. A purchase decision, a strategic decision. So I think there are a lot of people out there that actually know that they're no longer advising or facilitating something that is future ready. Yeah, yeah. So, um, of course, you could argue, okay, if you're a, a lawyer or a consultant or a bank, and just ask your facility manager to buy circular seats and, and sofas. But I think it's more you have a, a, a certain role where you facilitate decision making or spend uh, through the financing, through your advice, through your consultancy, through your whatever. And just question yourself on which which side of that project are you? Are you mm -hmm. going to facilitate that decision making in line with a future ready business or, or solution or are you still gonna 
basically opportunistically take a bit of advantage of the short term system that we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's more personal than that, yeah. than just um, uh, yeah. facilitating. I mean, it's really about which decision are you trying to help your clients take? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think a nice example is the city of uh, Venlo. They, they of course, are also kind of a service company. They, they provide services to, yeah. to the citizens. And they, they actually, um, they, they build a new city hall. Uh, and that's actually uh, having a, a carbon positive effect on the environment. But also when they're actually then developing the city and all the industry parks, they say there, there's not going to be any gas. We want these type of companies here and not yeah. those type of companies. And they have a big role to play there. Yeah, I, absolutely. I what, what what case yeah. is saying. Yeah. And then we talk about uh, legislation and case. I've been told that for you, legislation is also a very important part of your business model. Yeah, well, well, for, for me, it's particularly, it was a little bit different. So when yeah. I started the company, we had five restricting legislative frameworks. So we were not allowed to do this, actually, yeah. mm. um, uh, which is which is fine. I mean, we, we solved that. We, we, uh, we wrote a roadmap and we created four new yeah. regulatory frameworks, of, of which the biggest one actually was released last week. So now we're... Yeah, because we're, actually, what, what was the problem? Uh, I mean, if you... I mean, Look, the, the the food system is designed to uh, is designed linear because yeah. uh, uh, to provide um, food safety, uh, we look not. Uh, it's a strange relationship we have as a consumer. When something goes wrong, we actually don't blame the one who sold you the produce. We say, we blame the government. Um, and that, that arc of trust in the food is actually yeah. not in a direct relationship between producer and consumer. So the, the food system, and for good reason, because there was a lot of bad things going on uh, 50 years ago, mm. it is designed linear and there are all kinds of regulatory frameworks yeah. that basically define if, if we haven't clearly written it as legal, yeah. it is okay. illegal. Yeah. Now, so therefore, up, insects was a new product. It was completely new, so it yeah. didn't exist. It wasn't. Un, it wasn't known. And then, oh, by the way, you're going to create circularity in this yeah. system. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah. like. Uh, and uh, but we 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 we. Uh, I wrote a paper in 2013, basically, writing out how if you if you go through a b and c then you can show ecological impact you can show economic impacts and you can safeguard uh, uh, human food safety yeah. um, uh, and then we got a lot of support from the european government i mean we're for the size our industry is we almost get similar attention because yeah. of the ec enormous impact we can have yeah and and ronald is this something you see with, with more companies who want to become circular that there is this struggling with legislation yeah, I think there, there could be a struggle and I wanted to give an example, but Case now already gave the example from his business. But um, if it's really new, yeah. then the government doesn't have a way to deal with it. They, they look at it and we don't have any regulation it's like here. like Uber, Airbnb, yeah. stuff and, like that. And then uh, the example that I wanted to, to give is CMEC uh, Atlantis uh, Energy. They said in order to provide the circular economy with energy, we have to have renewable energy. So they wanted to put let's say wind turbines, that they can be a little bit smaller at the bottom of the sea to use the tides to produce energy. They're actually doing this in Scotland. But then also the regulator said, well, you cannot do this because uh, nobody has ever done this before and there is no regulation. But they did the same as was what Case just mentioned. They started to work with the regulators instead of pushing their technology and building it and then seeing if somebody would come up with the right regulation, they actually said, well, let's figure this out together. Yeah. Let's work on this together because it's really important to figure it out and to make sure that we uh, look at all the aspects of it. So not just a single thing so that we can put this turbine on the bottom of the sea, but all of the aspects. Uh, also indeed to come up with a regulatory framework and similar to what you're saying uh, the european uh, commission actually said we want to have you uh, the ceo of that business as a trusted advisor to help us on these issues because you're actually yeah taking a step back also from your business and you're helping us to to create this future with the right regulation to make sure that we can also accelerate this yeah. economy which yeah. is what they want as well yeah and uh, in the meanwhile we uh, we also see companies big companies like shell and tata steel who are uh, struggling with their linear business models yeah um what do you think case is it still possible for these huge companies to make that shift i mean everything is possible i mean I <laughs> uh if 
and from an aerospace engineering and physics perspective, I mean, that this is the simplest thing ever, right? It's just redeployment of capital in a different direction, divestment, investment. I mean, the young part of the, genera uh, the, the young generation within those companies struggle with purpose anyway, and so and they, they become the new leaders. So I think, I mean, it's of course it's possible. Uh, um, it's it's I think it's more worrying. That a, that a smaller fraction within leadership in, in many of these companies uh, just find it easier to slow it down. And I think that is that is something that, I mean, 20 years ago and before that, uh, I was already doing quite a bit in sustainability. I, I did expect a little bit more movement by 2020. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. if, you, if you take all the knowns uh, and you take all the knowns by the people that should know, yeah. the direction was that we would have been further by now. Yeah. And I think that is why there is such a, such a, a massive amount of disappointment. But mm. I think the, the, to the question, uh, what is possible? Of course it's possible. It's, it's, it's actually super easy. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and we as humans can do far more complex things than that. Um, How, what's your perspective yeah. on that? Uh, the, the, the interesting thing about the investing and divesting, um, and, and then I come back to interface. Um, interface, the, the, the carpet business, that was also one of the most polluting businesses industries in the world. And, and they actually, when they looked at this, uh, and also as engineers, they said, well, actually, if we reduce the waste in our business, we save lo loads of money, and we can actually use that money to fund going to carbon positive or, or, or to execute on the mission yeah. zero. So that's how they did it. But it, it's also what Case was pointing out. The leaders in those companies should start measuring different things. So Interface actually introduced eco metrics. So they started to look at their business in a different way and they still measured everything, but they also measured, okay, if we have so much waste here, what is it costing now? Um, and, and can we indeed prevent that from happening by changing our production process? And that's just, uh, well, yeah. Engineering, engineers will sort it out yeah. um, if you indeed give them the purpose to work on these uh, things. Um, and, and, and that actually funded their whole journey. Yeah. Their so actually journey. leadership is a, very, is a key aspect yeah. on becoming circular. Yeah, yeah. And, of and, course. Yeah, of course it is. And, and the company of Case is a, an example of circular by design. What, what does that mean? Yeah, so I think circular by design, and, and uh, this is one of the, the greatest ex uh, examples, I think, Casey, he looked at um, um, what is already circular by design, and that's nature. So in, in, uh, you, you can use different principles to actually move to a circular business model, uh, and, and one of them is biomimicry, yeah? that's looking at nature, and how it, does it work in nature. In nature, everything is a, is a circle. Um, and um, um, he just explained that he actually replicated how it works in, in nature. Everything is, is connected, there's no waste. And, and that's actually the principle, the concept that we will use in our business. And that's what they, of course, implemented in, in, their, in, in their business. Uh, otherwise, you have to think about, and if you're not do, using something biological or natural like, like case, you can still be circular by design by making sure that everything you send out to customers comes back to you then it's also circular by design but you cannot expect people to return those product products you have to have something in your model yeah so that there is actually a return channel because otherwise there's just a channel that pushes out products uh, if you're circular by design, you also will design a channel that brings back those products like Nike did with their, yeah. their bin. That actually helps customers bring it back and you might incentivize uh, them yeah. actually to, uh, to bring it back. I guess IKEA also now has a, you can return the furniture to IKEA itself. They also start a yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, and I think IKEA might also be what Case was mentioning, um, that they are now acting more on this and they also have a vision around it. But um, we all know that all of the, the marketplaces, uh, the marketplaces here in the Netherlands, but eBay, um, the IKEA products were quite popular. So people were trading them already for second hand, third third hand, uh, fourth hand, and, and now they realize, wait a minute, actually we're building, we're creating something good, we should actually be more in control of making sure that it's reused and used and used yeah, again. Yeah, so Case, um, I can imagine entrepreneurs, managers uh, who are watching right now, um, who aren't circular like you have done for over the past 11 years, what would you be your advice for them, how to make this, uh, this kind of shift? 
uh, I have a lot of different, difficult questions for you today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, People we, have asked you this before. Uh, yeah, but, but the coupling of to advise leadership and managers how to become more circular, I think I, I mean, deep down it's quite personal, right? So I think again, and, and, and COVID I think exasperated that. People in leadership have it easy, especially the last couple of years, right? Um, uh, so, just like like Spider-Man says, right? With great power comes great responsibility. If yeah. you're a leader, just use that responsibility and apply it, and make that change happen and accelerate the change. Um, and 99 out of 100 leaders or entrepreneurs know that they're either not as sustainable as they can be. Yeah or they know that they can do more, they just don't act yet. So I would say just use more of your power. Um, and if you uh, if you have already made that mind uh, shift, uh, Roland, what, what's your advice for companies who want to start the shift? What are the two, three first steps to take? Yeah, I, I think if you have a business, it can also be a business that uh, that does good, that generates these positive effects. But you you have to have a vision, so you have to and and, and you have to look at your your business, what it does now, and and where you can indeed move into another direction, so it indeed creates those positive effects. So I, I think you don't have to come up with a whole new business idea, but you have to look at your own business and and what can we indeed do there to make it circular. But you should have a vision, and it should be very clear what you're then aiming for to uh, to do and, and of course i fully agree all right uh, because no, so it, it, the good thing is you don't have to have a vision anymore because a vision a vision can also create lengthy hobbyism of uh, fancy words but these days it, it, it is also simply especially if you're a leader or, or you're running company mm -hmm. there's already a multitude of simple actions or choices so um, that you can simply take in that direction and i think that's What's holding up? I actually think that vision is is is, is holding up a lot of people. Oh, okay. Visions yeah. visions are sexy. Yeah, but do you yeah? have Same some, like some, strategy. some examples, for instance? Uh, what, what, what companies what? that just like reallocate ideas into new visionary perspectives and in, in slides, etc., and then they go on. Yeah, yeah uh, okay. That, but the, then the action is not taken. Yeah, but I, yeah, I understand. Okay. Well, what can companies uh, do? What action can can start be made? Paying for, so start calculating carbon pricing. Yeah. Making your uh, capex decision, including carbon pricing. Uh, uh, implement new mobility protocols. Uh, making sure that your purchase decisions are including circular assumptions. Um, um, uh, creating new metrics. Mm. I mean, you literally don't have to have a vision. You can just simply execute the strategy you already have, including yeah. a lot of changes. Yeah. What would yeah, you like to add? No. I fully agree, yeah. but, but and of because course, over here at BMI, you're you are from the strategy, of course. Yeah, yeah, and of course, and we we also don't like the lofty vision. So exactly. if you cannot execute yeah, exactly. on it, if it doesn't help you make better decisions yeah. to actually uh, ch change your business, then then yeah. then a vision for us is yeah. not then a good thing to have because uh, yeah, you're you're staring at it and you're doing nothing. So it should yeah. really drive the behavior of of the company and and drive new things. But I mean, um, I, I think. You can also look at, um, and, and what Case was saying, those decisions, you can already make them differently. So that's a good thing. And and also, um, yeah, you, you might want to look at your, your peers or, or other companies. What have they done uh, to actually move it into action? Yeah. Uh, and and that, that it's all shared because the, the the nice thing of companies like Interface and Mudjeans and, and, and Nike, they're all sharing what they learned from this. And, and they all gave you these principles that you can actually start acting upon. So yeah. uh, Nike also did it with their materials. You can actually um, um, come up with those materials and everything that they learned to come up with circular materials, they, they turn it into tools for other companies that they can use to look in a different way to their material stream. So there's a lot also available in the practical. Yeah. And is it also an idea to uh, get, you know, um, uh, to have a conversation with your employees, to have a conversation with your customers, because they have ideas as well, I can imagine. Sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, what you see with, with many of those companies, they didn't do it on their own. No. They they work together with partners, with customers uh, to drive this forward. Yeah, yeah, so I would absolutely uh, do this. Yeah. All right. We have uh, another question. Um, isn't it isn't the real issue growth? Uh, isn't the real issue growth and consumption? So should the focus on circular business models be on lesser consumption, animals, people? Uh, what's your perspective on that? No. <laughs> you uh, disagree? I, yeah, I disagree. I mean, uh, um, uh, the beauty about, uh, uh, I mean, we as huma humans, every, all the good comes from our infinite thinking, right? So, and our creativity. So the more we progress, uh, uh, the more we know in, in everything, whether it's science or making or manufacturing, the more we progress. Now, that's the same as the output and outcome discussion. As soon as, uh, I mean, a lot of products, when when they become circular, when they become renewable, when they become non-damaging, actually more could be better because it also alleviates the pressure on, on poverty and also alleviates pressure on, on um, uh, your your sense of happiness and, and well-being. So it's not the consumerism itself that is the, the enemy. It is too easy these days, so within the current production system, to just not factor in the externalities. And, mm. and, that, and that is worrisome because we already know that for a while mm -hmm. uh, but um, same as that population decline is a big enemy uh, uh, is also if we would start simply consume less without changes yeah it's a very big enemy yeah because the economy is not built on that well no humans are not built on that All right so, because a lot of things that we currently consume whatever it is um, is just not produced properly or in the right way or in the right balance so yeah. just going for less will just damage even more it will ha hamper uh, change it will hamper innovation it will reduce creativity and our ambition for how the future looks like so um, just less that's not that's not the way no you agree? I fully agree, and it's, it's, it's a change of the system that uh, Case is talking about, and, and that's what we actually. Uh, yeah, and the change of the system can already start today by taking actions, yeah, like a lot Case more. Yes, yeah. already mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Are you still hopeful, guys? And that's do, do we have enough time to save the planet, to save humanity, because the planet will survive? Um, it's not in the script, this question, but I, know. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to ask the you hopeful, The hopeful question is always, is always nice, you, uh, yeah. so it's always yes, Yeah, of course. Uh, time is running out, so I think that's also why a lot of youngsters are more depressed or, or where, why young, young, a lot of young people blame, yeah. uh, which, I think is, which I think is very worrisome. Um, so um, especially if you're above 30s or in your fear in certain positions of power or influence i would say focus on that and make sure that the young generation is hopeful um it is it is at least equally important than changing the production systems yeah what about you yeah so i i see that we're doing this with clients so that makes me hopeful but um yeah i think it can be done uh, a lot more uh, so yeah and, and it's it, of course badly needed and yeah the uh, the goals that we set, um, uh, let, let's say, uh, that, that the government set, I think there's no ambition in it to be climate neutral somewhere. Uh, that, uh, 2050. And, and of course, we, we, we should also act uh, ourselves, we shouldn't wait for that, but uh, uh, I think you can also uh, speed up things. Uh, yeah. if, if but do you see already see some changes uh, in how we look at sustainability and circularity? Because um, the last couple of years, sure. things yeah. are shifting. Well, <clears throat> 10 years ago, it already was, was good at birthday parties. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, now it's the opposite. I mean, if you work in oil and gas, even on the sustainability yeah. side, it's hard to yeah. like openly convey that, right? And so, um, and, and the things at birthday parties tend to be a precursor for behavior and activity. So I think um, it yeah. is changing. Uh, boardroom conversations, I mean, yeah. when we, uh, when 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 the uh, livestock market opened for us, and so we can make chicken less soy dependent uh, and make it massively uh, more sustainable. Um, within a week, we had almost all boards of the big feed companies on the line, and um, uh, so I think it, it, it boardroom conversations are changing, birthday parties mm, uh, yeah, are, yeah. are changing. Um, so 
I think yeah. when it comes to that, it's changing. Now companies have to change. Um, yeah. Roland, to final wrap, what would you like to say to the entrepreneurs, the managers, the people who are watching, uh, who say, all right, now is the time. We want to become circular. We want to make the shift. Um, I need to hire you, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> that would be the yeah. easy answer. Well, this is not an advertisement. <laughs> what, what's your advice on that? Yeah, I think, well, what I like about Case is also that he said uh, it's also uh, personal. So also think about uh, why would I want to do this as a person, as a, as a let's say, an inhabitant of, of my city or, yeah. and, and you can, of course, go off this, this planet. Um, uh, I think th that will ultimately uh, drive it and, and that will also inspire others. I mean, I, I'm always inspired if I hear entrepreneurs and or also managers within companies uh, to make it personal. And that's why I want to work on this and, and drive this forward. So I would look for that. And that, that also makes it, I think, practical. And then it's not so lofty and that yeah. it's just a term on the wall that we want to be more sustainable. But then you can actually make it personal. And yeah. I think we have to make it personal to... Uh, yeah, Case, well, to finalize with you, what would be your advice? <laughs> yeah, the, um, I always hate advice. Yeah, <laughs> a personal note. Um, well, it, 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 it is what it is. I think it's, it's, it is personal. And I think, um, uh, especially if you have already the luxury of spend, taking this time to listen to uh, two guys telling a story. I think you're already so far ahead of so many people who are completely effed, basically. So uh, every listener on this topic, uh, uh, I think it's a real, it's basically a personal thing. How much time and how much of your influence are you yeah. reverting uh, to the topic of making that world uh, beyond sustainability? Yeah, and if you look at the future of projects, because you've already been in, in a lot of countries, of course, but what's your goal? Uh, so a billionaire company, of course, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, well, the, the, um, the good thing about uh, the economy beyond sustainability that the monetary part is not not, not the most important one, but yeah. Um, uh, so our products to have a significant share in mainstream applications, so yeah. that. Tens of percentages of the original source of ingredients to produce pet food, meat, fish, food, plants, whatever. All of that produced with at least 10, 20, 30 percent not coming from uh, natural systems, so coming from circular ingredients. Okay. That's great. Step. Thank you very much um, for joining us. Kees Aarts, co-founder of Protix and of course Roland Wijnen, business designer here at BMI. Uh, my name is Sean Verschagen. Je, thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again for the next BMI Inspires and in the meanwhile, stay safe, stay sustainable.